Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avis Media Composer, let's continue our look at creating the video wall right from within our Media Composer or if you're using pre-version 7, our Symphony Timeline. You saw in Lesson 1 how really easy it was to actually get in and to create what could look like a very complex effect right from within the comfort of your nonlinear editing application. Now in this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to take the sequences that we pre-built, we're going to drop them into our video wall to sort of populate each one of the monitors and then we're going to create a a very simple uh, title just to throw it over top just to sort of show you how we can sort of round everything out and where you would use this sort of in a practical situation. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Avid's Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command tab into Avid's Media Composer and let's pick it up right from where we left off in the last lesson. So what I want to do now is I want to take these three and what we're going to do is we're going to drop them into the main video wall. Now what I'm going to do is I've only got three uh, sequences. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And we're going to take each one of these sequences and we're going to drop these clips into our pre-built video wall. Okay, so let's do this. First thing I'm going to do now, there's a couple ways that we can do the same thing. How most people like to work to keep things nice and organized is they'll select video layer 1 in their sequence and they'll come down to the step in, step out feature. Now what exactly does step in and step out mean? Well stepping into an effect is going to show me the clip or clips that are contained inside of this effect. So if I want to see what this effect is being applied to, not being manipulated in my sequence window, I can step into it and Media Composer, or Symphony in this case, will show it to you. Now one thing I do want to point out is that everything I'm showing you here doesn't need to be done in version 7. This Pretty much this technique will work all the way back to, well let's put it this way, we're talking about pre-adrenaline here. So we're talking about version 12, 11, 10 of the previous versions of Media Composer. We're not even talking about getting into adrenaline. Uh, media Composer Adrenaline. So, you know, don't think that you need version 7 to do what I'm showing you right now. Now, the other way to get in and see what's going on with the clip or clips inside of this effect is to simply double click on the effect. Now, obviously, the you know advantage with doing it this way is that to open and close the effect, all I have to do is simply double click on it. So now for me, I personally like to work this way by double clicking on the actual clip and just seeing the clip here that's contained with inside it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, with this clip, now that I can see the video clip that's enclosed in it, I'm going to take this sequence over here. Now what's important to keep in mind is that because I actually want to work with this sequence almost like it's a clip, I don't want to double click on it because if I double click on it, it's actually going to show it to me in the sequence window. Now I'm actually just going to delete the audio tracks on these sequences here because I don't need them at all. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the main video wall. Now, like I said, instead of double clicking on that sequence, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drag it up here into the preview window. So now all I have to do is simply double click on that first effect. I'm going to grab video layer one and I'm going to patch it into 1.2 which is of course the clip contained in that in that effect. All I'm going to do now is simply select the entire layer and I'm going to hit B on the keyboard. Now you'll see it's telling me that it's insufficient source material. Why? Well because with this clip I shouldn't have hit T on the keyboard to mark the entire clip because I actually have clips in here. So what I want to do is hit home and in and end and out to select all 10 seconds of this shot here. What I'm going to do now is simply hit B on the keyboard. Let me actually just undo what I just did here. I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard. Now I should just double check here. This is 10 seconds long. This is 10 seconds long here. So just let, let's just hit B and there we go. We now have clips inside of our video wall. Now of course that fades to black and then fades up again. So let's double click on our effect. We're going to do the same thing with video layer 2. We're going to take number 2, drag it right up here, home in and out. What we're going to do again, patch right into that 1.2. We're going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to select the entire clip and hit B. And guess what? We now have a similar effect. 
Now you're going to notice something interesting that happened when we went over that blank gap that we had left in our timeline. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to collapse that layer down. I'm going to come back to the beginning here and take a look at what goes on here. We actually get a bit of a mistake. It's actually showing me video layer one sort of uh, in our uh, in our video wall mode right here. So you can see that leaving that space empty is not helping us. So what do we do? Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into each one of these sequences and we're going to create a new title. Now I'm just going to use the standard title tool. That's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create black. Since I don't need to see through this, I don't need it to be transparent. What we're going to do is just close this up. I'm just simply going to call it black background. Now I'm just going to stick it into sequences just for right now. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to say save. And we're going to take our black background. I'm just going to mark an in point and we're going to drop this in instead of having a blank space. Now of course this doesn't help us for what's already in our timeline. Now let's just make sure we actually get this here. There we go. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the main video wall. All I have to do is double click on each one of the layers and we're just going to drop in our element here. Let's just do the same thing with this layer here. There we go. Perfect. And you'll see now that we now get the effect that we want. Very cool. Okay. So now let's do video layer three. What we're going to do again, we're simply going to take sequence number three, drag it right up here into the preview window, home in and out. Again, exactly like we did before. Drag up into layer 1.2, T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to mark that entire clip. There we go. So you'll now see that we now have the three layers. Very cool. Now all we're going to do is the exact same technique for the next layers here. Let's close this up. Video layer four. Of course, this is going to be sequence number one course, home in end out. There we go. Patch in. Let's hit the T on the keyboard, drop that in. Let's do again number two. Let's do layer number five. Drag it right up here. There we go. Drop it in. Now of course the only problem with doing what we're doing as you see is that we then have the similar layers on top of each other. So why don't we do this? Let's actually collapse this down. What we're going to do just for the purposes of changing things up, I'm just going to come back to video layer four and let's take number three. And let's drop that in there. There we go. Just to change it up. Now like I said, you probably want to get in and do different video for each one of these. But just for the purposes of me doing this in this tutorial, I think that we're okay. And I'll do number one next. We've already got our in and out points marked. Again, we're just going to patch in. Come right back to the beginning, down to the end, B on the keyboard. And let's do the same thing with number six here. Again, just patch right in, just like such. And I believe we need, is it number three that we need? No, it's probably number one that we need. Yeah, it is. So let's take that again, T on the keyboard, B to drop that in. Let's take a look at what's going on here. There we go. I think we've actually doubled this up the wrong way here. So you can start to even lose track. There we go. That's what we want here. It's even so simple to lose track if you're just looping those three elements over and over and over again. There we go. So that's changed it up. Now what we're going to want to do is for layer number seven, we're going to want to use the exact same sequence here. There we go. Of course, number eight. Let's use, uh, I think for layer number eight, what we're going to do is we're going to use Let's see if boxing is the right one. We're going to find out in about two seconds here. I think we're good. And of course, last but certainly not least, layer number nine here is going to be our motocross. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that once I have this all laid out, let's make sure that we actually have the entire sequence here marked. There we go. Is that again, much like we've done before, let me just undo what I just did here. Make sure that we're 10 seconds, 10 seconds, drop that in. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, before I move on, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to the hamburger here. I'm going to come up to my clip colors and I'm just going to turn all of the clip colors off 
just for the purposes of me not wanting to see that lovely orange color. I just like having everything one uniform color right here. Now, of course, I want to monitor the topmost layer just so we can see every element inside of our uh, video wall. And basically, I could just you know hit render and we'd be all set to go here. But what I always like to do just to spice things up is I'm just going to add a new video layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a title on top of this. Now, what I also want to do before I move on, you'll see things look kind of blurry. They don't actually look very good. And you're probably thinking, well, Kev, that, that's not very good. You know, I don't think it looks as good as it should. And you know what? You would be absolutely correct. Why is that? Well, I'm not looking at the best possible quality. I'm just going to come down to video quality right here. We're going to click it to green and now everything is looking nice and sharp. You'll see that we can put it in super draft mode right there. There you go, draft mode. And then we have full res right there. And you can see that it adjusts it in the preview window and in your timeline as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up and I'm just going to close these bins that I don't need anymore here. And I'm just going to keep sequences open. Actually, what I should do is just open graphics here and we'll just stick our black background right in there. And I'm going to keep graphics open here because we're just going to create a title to put on top of our uh, video wall here. So let's come up to clip. Let's come down to new title. And I'm simply going to select the marquee title tool. Okay, now I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, why would you use the marquee title tool over the standard title tool? And the reason is actually very simple. I want to get in and make small manipulations to things like rotation, and I don't want to have to use the 3D tool to do it. I want to do it right from within the titling application itself, and the standard title tool can't do that. That's why I need to use the marquee title tool. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just zoom back on the canvas here by hitting Command and minus on the Mac, Control and minus for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm going to create some text here. We're just going to type in, of course, video walls rock. Now, of course, if we wanted the screen to dim down a little bit when this text actually came in, what we could do if we wanted to is we could come right over here and we could actually just draw a shape onto the screen just like such. And instead of that shape being white, we're going to make it black. And what we're also going to do is we're going to drop it down to about 30%, I think, here. Let's just come back here, 30%. There we go. And what we also want to do is we want to come up to object and we want to send it backwards just so that our text is going to stand out a little bit better. So this way when the text fades on, the whole video wall will dim down a little bit to show our video walls rock. Now what I can also do here, maybe we'll just make this a little bit more predominant. Maybe we'll make it about 45. That's better. And with our text, what I want to do with that is I want to come up and I want to use Amazon. Amazon is a great free font that you can find simply by Googling it. It's a great handwritten looking font. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split this up into two lines. And what we also want to do is just have a couple exclamation marks in here because you know nothing really says that something rocks, or in this case, just rock, like a bunch of exclamation marks. There we go. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of our text. I'm just going to adjust the text size. Now, you'll see that the rock word is a little bit low. So what I'm going to do is just simply select everything. I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. We're just going to adjust the leading here by simply using the up and down arrow keys. I think that's looking pretty good right about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this up and I'm going to add a drop shadow to it. With the text selected, we can just select everything in here. I'm just going to adjust the bounding box here. With everything selected, I can simply turn the drop shadow on. And what we're going to do is set its opacity at about 100. I want that drop shadow to be full. And we're going to adjust its softness as well. I don't want the drop shadow to be that crisp. There we go. We'll set the offset to be about 0.5 and minus 0.5. Very good. So this definitely stands out. Now let's get in and like I said, uh, sort of when we got into marquee, rotate this text, which is something we can't do in the standard title tool. I'm simply going to navigate over to the rotation tool. Just grab my axis here. Would it be my axes or my axis? I guess because it's singular, it would be my axis. We're just going to rotate this just kind of like that. Now, of course, if I wanted to, let's just see what our safes are looking like here. Well, we're actually not too bad. Not too bad at all. Maybe we'll just stick with that. We'll stick inside, pretty much inside our title safe here. What I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to save this title to Ben. We're going to call it Video Walls Rock, just like such. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to save this out to our bin. There we go. There's our Video Walls Rock. What I'm going to do now is, and you can see that I still have the marquee title tool open here. I'm just going to close that. And let's actually take this and edit it into our timeline. So, of course, let's just sort of come down, I don't know, about midway. I'm going to mark that as my endpoint. I'm going to come down to about here because I don't want that video walls rock to come in right off the top here. 
and we'll just bring that all the way down to the end. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. What I'm also going to do now is I'm going to come back and I'm going to use my shortcut for Fade Effect. Fade Effect, if you don't have it mapped onto your keyboard, you really should. It's a it's a sort of a, a function that I use all the time. Well, you know, It's pretty much as it describes whether you're using an actual effect or a title, which is still considered an effect, you can quickly get in and fade that no problem. And of course, again, I have it mapped to F12 on my keyboard. So what I'm going to do is simply hit F12. I've got Video Layer 10 selected where the effect happens to be. Now that's obviously important to keep in mind as well. You only want to make sure that you have the track selected that you want to actually fade the effect to. And what I'm going to do is just set it to be 24 frames. I'm simply going to say, OK, I'm going to come back here. And I'm just going to scroll through because I would have to render this out. The render takes probably about a minute to two minutes to render out, which is actually not too bad considering this is, well, nine streams of HD video and an HD uh, sequence. Uh, it's actually 10 uh, video effects here. And you'll see that I can come through and everything will start to fade down. And there's my video walls rock super. Very, very cool. So I hope this lesson has shown you how simple it is to get in and not leave your nonlinear editing application if you don't want to. You can create complex video walls right from within your Media Composer or if you happen to be pre-version 7, your Media Composer or Symphony Timeline. Now coming up in the next couple lessons, I'm going to show you how we can take elements from Media Composer and work with them inside of not only Adobe's After Effects, but inside Apple's Motion as well, because maybe you don't want to create the video wall in here. Maybe you're more comfortable creating it in those compositing applications. So I'm going to show you how you can do that just as easily. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.